Hey guys, you're listening to Vol. Welcome to the video as usual. This video is called Intent Intent Play and Pie Slicing. It's a discussion. This is a topic in Infinity that gets talked about quite a lot. Uh, people who play Infinity and visit the forums and, and who are experienced know exactly what this topic is and have dealt with this before, but newer players may not be as familiar with it. It's a topic that comes up regularly on Infinity forums, just like a lot of topics regularly do in war games. And it's almost like forum bingo. You sort of have these things which continually sort of crop up every so often, and the, the thread comes up, and you talk about it for a while, and then it, it goes away. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just explain very clearly what I mean by this this topic and this, this scenario, and uh, make sure that newer players understand exactly what we're dealing with. The second thing I'll do in the video is uh, just generally broadly sort of an analyze it and start to talk about why there's one camp of people who do not favor this way of playing the game and explain their arguments and their position why you wouldn't want to go that way. Then I'll move on to the other camp, the group of people that uh, think that you should actually be playing Affinity this particular way. And then finally I'll close the video off by explaining how I feel about it, my intentions and my recommendations. So what is intent play and pie slicing? What do these words mean when you hear them on Infinity Forums? Let's go through it. So Exhibit A, I'll get my, my mug out of the way, my, my face out of the way, and we'll look at a photograph of a game of Infinity. So you can see this is a, a Pan Oceana model. It's, um, it's an airborne deployment trooper, the Akali Sikh commando with a Spitfire and he's uh, comfortably behind some total cover here, this this crate. And in the background there's a, a Nomad model, it's actually a Jaguar with a chain rifle, but uh, the, the type of model's not important. What I want to describe here is a situation where it's the Pan Oceana player's turn, and we're, the, we're playing Pan Oceana here and we spend an order on the Akali. And let's pretend the Akali is further to the right in this picture, further behind the crate so he's in total cover. And I've drawn a red arrow down the bottom just showing that he's going to spend the first short skill of his movement moving to the corner of the crate such as, in such a way that he can actually get line of sight through to this, this Jaguar. Now I want you to uh, imagine that there's another model on the staircase as well, and this time the model is something that the Akali doesn't want to mess with. Maybe it's a, a total reaction Zond, or um, a model with neurocinetics, um, the Sin Eater observant with a, a gun that's going to rip him up in, in reactive turn if he has to have, to have a face to face roll with both models. So you can see here this is a position where it would be advantageous if you can get a face to face roll with the first guy but not the second guy. And uh, mathematically and physically, you should be able to do this, right? If you move the Akali up just enough so he gets line of sight to this first model here, but not this model, then you're fine. And technically, as you're coming around, um, your line of sight is widening, and it's, it's coming across in an angle, a sweeping clockwise angle, until you actually hit this model here. To describe this a bit more clearly, I'm going to bring up um, a paint diagram here. So this A here is the Akali, and it's just going to move uh, along in this direction until it hits the corner, and then the line of sight indicated by the pink line will hit the model title X, but not the model title Y. All right, you, you guys can see that, can't you? If I go select here and grab our Akali and just pretend that we're moving it along. So you start here, spend an order on the Akali. The first short skill is a move. You declare two inches and incidentally two inches takes you to exactly this spot here where a line of sight is drawn to X but not Y and then you pull back a little bit. And then you say, okay, my opponent, what arrow would you like to choose? Um, so the opponent um, declares an arrow with X but not Y. Now, rules as written in Affinity, what you actually do is you declare that you're spending an order on model A, then you tell your opponent it's going to be a short skill move, you physically pick up the A model, you physically move it along to here, and then you say, okay, this is the point at which it's going to sort of stop and then move back, and then you indicate the tra trajectory back, but you at some point physically hold the middle model here, and then importantly, only after you've shown your opponent where the model has moved, your opponent then declares an arrow. Now your opponent might rightly say, okay, well, let's just get down on the table, let's get out the laser pointer, 
oh, I actually think that you didn't even move far enough around to get line of sight to Model X, so your order is wasted. In fact, if you were too cautious and you only you started here and you only moved to here and you didn't get into line of sight of Model X, well, that's a fair call. You didn't get line of sight. What if, though, you accidentally moved too far around to here and uh, we're now able to get our pink sort of ruler out and draw another line and we find that, oh, Model Y has line of sight to Model A as well. So in that situation, you just cop it. You, you have to actually declare your Spitfire shots against Model X, which might throw a smoke grenade or what have you, or shoot you with a sniper rifle, and Model Y, which might shoot back at you with Neurosynetics heavy machine gun. And um, when you're up against two arrows, the chances of actually winning are very bad. So you in that situation, you're like, oh, damn, I didn't, didn't intend to do that. But that's OK. That's infinity, and that's actually how it's played. So the difference between intent and a non-intent version of playing is that if you are not using intent, you actually have to declare the movement of your model, show where it's moved to, move back, and then the line of sight is determined. Whereas if you are using what we call pie slicing, where you uh, declare where you've intended to move, what actually happens in this situation is this. You're playing Paneoceana, you spend your order on Model A, the Akali, and you simply tell your opponent, I am going to move the Akali towards the corner of the crate and back again, and I'm only going to go far enough so that I get line of sight to X, but I'm not going to come to line of sight of Model Y. And at that point you stop and you say, what would you like to do? And then your opponent, if your opponent has agreed to play that particular way, says simply, oh, I will react with Model X by dodging or shooting or whatever you do, and Model Y doesn't come into it. And um, in that situation, there's no possibility of, of A actually encountering both X and Y in the same activation, because you've simply discussed what's going to be happening rather than simply moving and measuring it. So hopefully you guys see the distinction between that. Uh, in a situation where X and Y happen to be a very long way away, imagine this pink line represents 40 inches or 50 inches. That's a huge distance. And if if these two models are very close together, it's going to be hard for A to actually physically position the model in such a way without spending a lot of time using the laser pointer to determine that. And that can be a good thing. If you don't use that intent version of playing, then it's very risky to engage two models if they're far away and if they are very close together. You also have to be very careful about moving your models around. The thing is, it's also going to lead to a situation where you're going to be uh, deliberately more careful if you're really adamant that you want to win by checking line of sight and so forth a lot more. But ho hopefully I've illustrated it well so far. So if you're playing without using this whole intent and pie slicing sort of thing, it's very simple. You pick the model, you move it, you move it back, you complete the move, you declare that you're finished moving, then your opponent checks to see which models get the arrows, they declare the arrows, and then you move on to your next short skill. If you're playing by using pie slicing and, uh, and, and declaring intent, then it's, uh, it's different. You know, you simply des describe in an abstract way what you want to achieve with a movement, and your opponent treats that accordingly. Hopefully that makes sense. One reason it's called pie slicing is that if you imagine like this massive... Um, this massive sort of circle around your 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 model you know you obviously what you're doing here is you're you're cutting the pie and limiting sort of a line of fire where you know a model has this massive line of fire whereas you're limiting it limiting to, to a certain section it's a bit of a strange name so that is that is exhibit a that is the first example of where pie slicing um, crops up infinity quite a lot and uh, if you've played infinity you may well have encountered this already what I want to do next is go to the second example where pie slicing continues to get interesting. Uh, let's use this one here. So as you can see in this picture, there is a Yan Huo with a pair of missile launchers uh, in the deployment zone. But you can't see any enemy models at all. Let's imagine that we're the Yu Ching player and we're putting down this Yan Huo heavy infantry unit. And there are no orders being spent, this is just the deployment zone. So we say to our opponent, I'm going to deploy this model in such a way that it only gets line of sight to a particular position and no further. Um, what I was hoping to do here is to actually edit it with paint. Um, oh, apparently I can't do that. Okay, never mind. 
actually if I go to paint, go file, we'll go open, and we'll see if we can grab it open like this. Okay. Apologies for the delay. Alright, here we go. So when you're deploying this model, you're very wary about the angles from which this model can be attacked. So if we look at the photograph and we draw a red line along here, you can see that the Yanwo has line of sight from um, obviously its base around the corner of the building uh, up to where, around about where the subjective is, right? So imagine a situation where for some reason we don't want our opponent to be able to shoot us from this particular building. We want um, our opponent to have to engage us from behind this black crate over here so that we can get a better range band with missile launchers or neurocinetics or what have you. So you simply say at the start of the game, here's my Yanho, I've deployed him, my intention is to only have line of sight. And you move your arm like this around to this point here. And if you wanted to get really pedantic, you could actually point to the terrain where you intend, or you put a piece of blue tack or something on the terrain, and you say to your opponent, look, um, regardless of what happens later in the game, I'm putting my model down, I'm measuring as carefully as I can, but I just want you to know that if you move a model up in this building, it's not going to get line of sight to this Yanho here, but if you move it around the corner from the black box here, it is going to get line of sight. Now mathematically that's possible, and physically it's possible, um, it's just that you may not want to spend a lot of time physically exactly calculating measuring it out and you don't want your opponent to sort of move onto that building and feel like he has a chance to shoot you just by sort of trying to wrangle the movement. So you might say, oh, I intend to do that. Now that requires your opponent's agreement of course. Your opponent might not agree to that and uh, you may not be playing without this intent version of play and it's simply a matter of deploying your Yanho here, taking your hand away from the model and then later on your opponent moves somewhere around the, the table and you just check the silhouettes and if it's a tournament you just get the tournament organizer or the war course so to speak to come over and check it. So that is an, another example where intent can crop up. Let's look at the third example where I think intent uh, gets kind of interesting. In this picture there is an Overdrawn which I've handily converted to have a heavy rocket launcher and it's uh, trying to get some partial cover behind this white micro art studio building. There's also a Noctifier um, with a missile launcher, a very dangerous aero unit. What I want you guys to imagine is that further off to the top of the photo somebody is trying to move around the corner here, somewhere around about here to uh, get behind this building in partial cover and shoot at the Overdrawn. Maybe it's um, like uh, just a Brigada with a heavy machine gun or something like that. Just something that feels like it can beat the Overdrawn since the Overdrawn's only got one shot. I also want you to imagine that the, the Noctifier here is in hidden deployment and hasn't been placed on the table yet. As a combined army player, we know where the models are, but our opponent, it's the opponent's active turn, and they're coming around the corner of the building. So our opponent declares, I'm spending my order on this mobile brigada with HMG and my or even multi-rifle and the mo mobile brigada shows up here and says okay um, that obviously gets line of sight to your overdrawn what does your overdrawn want to do so then as the combined army player we say well the overdrawn will respond by declaring a ballistic school attack with its uh, heavy rocket launcher and I also have a noctifier with muscle launcher in hidden deployment I will activate that and arrow with it and fire a missile at you as well Imagine if, in this situation, the Nomad player says, Oh, actually, sorry, I didn't make myself clear. My intention was to only come around far enough so that I can see the Overdrawn with missile at rocket launcher, but not any further than, like, around here, right? Let's just, I mean, I think I've closed my, my pain document now, so I can't really show that to you, but remember, if there's a building... And if my arm represents line of sight, the closer you come to the corner, the further your line of sight comes around it. You guys already saw that from the previous, previous example. So let's imagine, looking at this photo, the Brigada was further up here, and he's walking towards this side of the building. 
It's physically possible for him to only come around enough to get line of sight to the Overdrawn. He can avoid the arrow from the Noctifier, if he knew it was there, that is, and only shoot at the Overdrawn. But, this Noctifier wasn't hidden deployment, wasn't it? So, this is where we actually open up a new can of worms. There's a new issue here. If the Nomad player was to say, my intention, the very start of the order before the Noctifier appears, is to say, I am coming across to the side of the building. I'm going to be able to get arrows from any hidden deployment in that forest over there, and that the micro art studio building over here, and right to the blue objective where the Overdrawn is, but no further around the side of the table. I'm just going to sweep around, get to him, and I'm going to pull back. Well, if the Nomad player does that from the outset, the combined army player will not even be able to declare the, the usage of the Noctifier, because the Noctifier will not get line of sight at any point and will not be able to declare an ARO. However, if the Nomad player carelessly moves far enough around the corner, staying in partial cover, but getting to a point where the model physically has uh, line of sight to the Noctifier, the combined army player is within his or her rights to declare an ARO from the Noctifier. Um, if the Nomad player says afterwards that the intention was to declare line of sight just to the overdrawn and not any further, after the, um, the combined army player had declared the hidden deployment ARO, that is a different story altogether. So, having looked at these three images, I hopefully I hope you guys get an idea of what what intent versus. Oh, there's an extra picture of me <laughs> on the desktop. Hopefully, you guys get an idea of, of what intent and pie slicing really amounts to. So. What I want to talk about next is the various positions because this divides the community a little bit and this is one of the reasons why this is a recurring topic on the forums. You know, you wait a while, suddenly it emerges again and then it goes away and then somebody else brings it up because they're new. And that's how forums work and that's just a fact of life. So in the video description of this YouTube video, there'll be a link to an article written recently where um, one particular player goes into a lot of detail really arguing for not playing with this idea of intent and pie slicing and just simply putting the model where it's meant to be and letting, letting things go. And I think um, this particular article makes a, a pretty good case for it. The gist of it, if you don't feel like reading the whole thing, is that first of all, the rules are pretty clear about that's how you do it. The rules as written say that you move the model first, just physically put it in position, then you determine line of sight, and if you happen to get it wrong because you moved the model to the wrong spot, that is on you and you suffer the consequences either by wasting your order or by taking more arrows than you intended to take. That is the first reason why you might want to play without intent and pie slicing. The second reason is related to reason number one, and that is that the designers of this game, Corvus Belly, actually intend for that. They actually prefer that outcome, and when you've, looked, when you've talked to them in interviews and seen their battle reports, that is how they roll. So you watch them and they say, look, um, I've moved the model, um, does that model have line of sight to it? And you go check it, and yep, that's true, that's, that's how it works. You don't sort of talk about which models you want to get line of sight to, you simply move the model and then you check. So, so that is how they do it. Uh, one, one, one idea that wasn't perhaps um, described as fully in that article that I'd like to add to the, the particular camp and argue for that is that having a standardized way of doing it, a standardized rule set is uh, better for uh, playing against strangers and certain tournaments. I want you to imagine that you move house and you move to a different city or a different country but you still want to play Infinity because it's your your favorite tabletop game. So you look for people who play Infinity in your area and you organize a game and one Sunday afternoon you go over and you drive over and you set up the table and you play. And partway through the game you find yourself in this position and it's, it's your turn and you want to move your model far enough around to attack this first model but not the second model. Imagine if you're used to playing with intent or whatever it is and you say to your opponent, Hey, it's cool if I pie slice here, right? It's cool if I just say that I intend to attack this model, but not that model. That, that, that's cool, right? 
but your opponent might have never heard of that before. Your opponent might just say, well, what are you talking about? I mean, the rules clearly say that you move the model and then we'll determine what the line of sight is, so why don't we just play it that way? So the advantage of using just the rule set and just playing with the physical position of the model and not, not using this intent, this whole abstract way of doing it, is that uh, you're more likely to sort of have the same sort of understanding and playing field with, with other strangers. Ultimately, when these arguments occur and when people sort of decide to take sides and go one way or the other, it's usually because they had a particular experience. Something happened in the game to, for, to make them feel bad or to feel good or to form their experience. I was reading the forums one time and there was a guy who was talking about a, a, at a game he had where he had some models which are quite good in aero like a total reaction bot or a sniper rifle or a link team or something like that and he had set them up on a building and he was telling us about how his opponent said okay um, I'm moving my model probably a uh, heavy infantry model with a machine gun I'm moving it just so far enough to get light of sight to this model here and then he did that so he shot that model and quite easy to kill that model in the active turn with an HMG and then he could proceed to do it with the next model and the next model and so forth and the, the person who who was experiencing that and having that happen to them never feels good it's it's a feeling that and this is how that player described it they described it it, it felt like the other player was cheating it felt like the other player was just manipulating that sort of uh, Saito understanding to to wipe them off the board and I, I empathize with that, I feel for that person, because that player who wrote that forum post had a really bad time in that game and hadn't come to any sort of agreement before the game with that particular opponent about how they would play that. So uh, it, it, it ended up in a situation where that, that player, that protagonist in the story, I should say, has gone and put his models out in a position to shoot back, to, to use arrows, without realizing what was going to happen. If that player had known that his opponent was just going to systematically take him apart with an HMG and pick on one model at a time, well that player may not have actually used that strategy, that player may not have actually kept the models watching the table, they may have hid things or kept things prone. So I can certainly, f I can, I can certainly see why that particular person would become a proponent of that particular side. They would come out and always argue against pie slicing and against rules, as an, uh, rules play as an intent. Uh, because they want to validate themselves. They want to be in games feeling assured that that bad experience will never happen to them again. At this point, um, I want to move on to the next stage, which is to talk about the people who play it the other way, the people who do use intent, people who do use pie slicing, people who abuse that and enjoy that and, and play their games based around that. So why would you want to play that way? Why would you want to be able to always just sort of talk about what where the models are going rather than actually having to physically get down and measure it? Well, the first and main reason why we'd want to use that is that it eliminates the need to physically get down and be pedantic about where the models are. In war games, you invest a lot of money in the models, you invest a lot of time showing up and preparing and setting up and being in this situation where your ego is against the other person's ego. And we can all say, oh, it's just a game, but it matters to people. And if you want to win, and, and most Infinity players do want to show up, and when nobody wants to show up and just get wrecked all the time, well, it's not that hard to sort of just get down at the table and get out a laser pointer and just work out where it's going to be. So. In this situation, you spend the order in your Akali, and you extremely carefully move the model millimeter by millimeter, get out your laser pointer, and physically stop the Akali at exactly the spot where the edge of the base is drawing a line directly to the middle of the uh, enemy model's base. And then you ask your opponent to verify that uh, and tell them that your, your model's moving back. And this could take a lot longer than it needs. The point is that it's mathematically possible and it's physically possible so there shouldn't be any issue with it. Also Infinity does not use time turns. If you play War Machine or Guild Ball, very competitive games, those games are on the clock, Infinity is not. So 
imagine that you have become very skilled at getting the exact position of your models right and your opponent hasn't your opponent could take all day in a tournament's tournament situation I've seen games lost because one guy only got through a couple of turns and he wanted to sort of you know get the objective in the last turn but the tournament organizer didn't even let them finish the game because they were too slow so uh, one of the reasons for playing this way is that it avoids situations like that the other thing about using intent and, and pie slicing is that it's not exactly as though it's available to one person but not the other both players can use that so if you're having that done to you like in the previous example where that person came onto the forum feeling you know, upset that they'd been taken apart the next game that person can go and do that to someone else you know that's not that hard also if 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 you are up against that particular strategy it's not that hard to simply just I mean you don't have to put that many arrows out you can leave your arrows to later the later in the game there are some strategies that, that are sort of that work both ways in fact I want to actually just stop the discussion here and actually say something about the way that this shifts the metagame and this is very interesting and I think people who play one way in one country and one way in another country might learn something from this point and that is that if you do not use intent play and if you do not use pie slicing a rows are better you can put your link team with two like Haramaki missile launchers right next to each other and your opponent may not feel comfortable to just engage one of them and slice the pie onto one of them and then onto the next one because that move wouldn't be assured so that particular strategy of using those arrows is more effective but if you're playing in a community in a meta where intention and pie slicing is the norm where that's allowed and accepted then you may not want to use as many arrows because your opponent can easily pick those individual models apart with one HMG so I think that's a really fascinating point and it's not a bad thought I mean imagine if you took this to an extreme and said that um, let's just give the benefit of the doubt to the uh, the reactive turn player all the time and that um, not only can an active turn player not declare this sort of intent to attack one model if let, let's just make up a rule from scratch this new magical rule where if you have one model within an inch of another model which is watching the table and they're more than 24 inches away from the model trying to attack then they can both attack back I mean that sounds ridiculous I know it sounds the most stupid thing in the world but imagine if that was the case well you know reactive turn play would be much more effective you'd, you'd take a lot more ARO pieces and you'd be more aggressive with putting out your your deterrent you know you're controlling fire lanes I personally don't think that would be the best best version of the infinity but it would be a legitimate version of infinity and you could still play games that way so that'd be quite interesting so um, so far hopefully I've described um, how the system works why somebody might be in favor of it, why somebody might not be in favor of it but let's keep talking about it I want to start in talking about my views on it and uh, what my recommendations would be I think if you only take one thing away from this video and you only sort of accept one point that I'm making it should be this if you are going to show up to a game in Infinity and you're not sure how your opponent plays when it relates to these issues just have a talk about it before the game just say to your opponent look uh, what do you think of intention play what do you think of pie slicing do you want to use this or that and if your opponent doesn't mind will suggest something and make sure your opponent agrees with that but if your opponent has a preference they definitely do not want to use pie slicing or maybe they, they really do want to use it then you can talk about them and negotiate with it and hopefully you know come to an agreement before you play and I guarantee that will mean that the expectations are right nobody will feel hard done by where they didn't really adjust to that I think that's really important in these examples I came up with um, I think you'll notice that the difference between the first example where it's the active turn and you're moving to attack something really doesn't um, differentiate much from this other example where you're simply 
determining uh, a line of sight deployment zone. This this deployment zone line of sight is a little bit more finicky because it's not just a matter of verification. You actually have to constantly remember uh, where this model got line of sight to. But so long as your opponent is just doing that for one or two key models, like a TR bot or a, a missile launcher, I don't see what the big deal is. We're, we're mature, mature enough as players to be able to accept that your opponent wants to just be assured that, that he or she has actually positioned the model correctly. And if that means putting like a piece of blue tack on a building or sort of just showing like with a card where the thing is or just writing it down or just getting you to remember it, that's fine. Let's talk about this third example though because this is um, kind of an interesting one. We said that the mobile brigada shows up out from around this building here and uh, the player wanted to only attack the overdrawn. There's a distinction here though. If the nomad player with the mobile brigada says before activating the model my intention is to spend an order and move only around just enough to see where the forest is, the white building is, and the overdrawn is, but not any further past this, this gap here, then my thought is that the, assuming you're playing with intent, that is, the Noctify cannot declare a response. However, even if you are using pie slicing, and even if you're using rules as intent, if the Nomad player in this case was to move around here so it can see both models and then get shot back at by the surprise missile launcher, you can't take that back and suddenly declare that you're using intent just because you got caught out. That is not ethical. That is that is not allowed under any circumstances. And I think it's pretty easy to see why. I'm pretty sure I don't need to insult anybody's intelligence by sort of going into that in a lot of detail. But the reason why I add this little nuance to the example is that people who hate intent play and hate pie slicing play might one day use this as an example of oh okay you know if if it's just a free world and everybody's free to use intent and pie slicing whenever they want they're going to abuse it in that way and and even people who advocate intent and pie slicing are going to draw the line okay it's not actually that extreme it's not that bad you know you've still got to move your model within the realm of where it can move and you've got to be up front with it before your opponent discloses any hidden information right so that's actually really really important so where do i stand on this the first thing i want to say about my position is that I do not want people to think of my position as authoritative. I want you to watch my videos and learn from my thoughts and my reasoning and take away from it something new that, that makes you think about it. But I don't want you to go away and think, oh, well, Borla C said this, so, you know, let's run with that because we respect him as a commentator. I don't think you should do that. In the same way that I don't think you should actually give any stock to people on the forums if they happen to be saying something very loudly if you can think of reasons not to agree with them and this might be controversial just because Corvus Belly the people who design this game prefer it one way doesn't mean you should play that game that way because you're the customer you spend your money on their models you paint the models you show up to the game they're not there to, to adjudicate that Maybe at tournaments like Interplanetaria where they're, they're, they're sponsoring it, that might be different. But in your version of Infinity, you should feel free to play what version of Infinity you want. I usually prefer Intent and Pie Slicing. My community does that. That is my preference. But, again, just because I choose to do it that way doesn't mean you can't do it the other way. When Corvus Belly says that they prefer to move the model and declare the position and just treat it as it is i think that they are okay the forward thinking and the innovative in some regards like with their model design but in sometimes with their rules design and some of the unit design they're backward sometimes they do get it wrong just because they make a good game and you like infinity doesn't mean that they're perfect and they actually get everything right it's okay to criticize corvus belly just in the same way that it's okay to criticize games workshop or privateer press so wh why would i advocate intention and pie slicing well let's just go back to the arguments if you aren't using an intention and pie slicing you can still achieve what you want to achieve by moving this model around getting line of sight to only this model but not this model it's just that it's going to slow the game down unnecessarily because if 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 winning or losing is going to be a matter of making sure you engage a face-to-face -face role with one model but not the other well you're, you're going to be as pedantic as you need to you might even take five or ten minutes just acutely squaring up the model also you might be doing that every single time you activate a model and 
every single time you deploy a model just saying okay I'm just gonna take a while to make sure this model is exactly getting the line of sight for the chain rifle to this wall but not too far around otherwise I'll get shot out of chain rifle range then I'll move my link team in, in such a way that the sniper rifles getting a long line down there but this building closer to me infiltrators can't get to me there and um, every time I activate and come around a corner I'm gonna actually just make sure I come around just enough so that potentially if there's a hexa sniper over there even though this probably not just in case I'm just gonna move it around here and that will be the result for some players in a competitive scenario I will admit that a lot of gamers won't do that and a lot of gamers will be happy to be caught out and happy to just play in a blase sort of way in a nonchalant way even if intent and pie slicing is not being used that is cool but in a game where we're not yet using time turns and even if we were using time turns I still wouldn't advocate it it's better to use like a, a system which I mean it doesn't benefit any particular player I mean both players have that opportunity to use the active turn to use their HMG to come and sweep around that's not something which is going to just disadvantage one person or the other it's just a particular way of playing the game now I think that's really important that that both sides have that have that that opportunity that that way to actually play the game in that specific way hopefully this hopefully this video made sense guys um, again I mean I don't want to come across as though uh, I would be adverse to other people doing it a different way from me and in fact the, the, the note that I want to end on the, the thought that I want to finish with is that if you happen to play me personally in real life with infinity and you want to play without intent and apply slicing I will be happy to do that my own personal position at the end of the day isn't really to prioritize using pie slicing and intent for my games my personal position is to be more of a chameleon I want to show up to the game and find out what makes you comfortable as a player what what version of infinity do you want to play and then I want to play that version to satisfy you and the reason one of the, well, there are a few reasons for that but I guess one reason is just to make sure that we have a, a fun and enjoyable game but one of the other reasons why I prefer that is because if I play better than you and if I manage to beat you or if I manage to even roll better dice than you and, and win by luck I want the outcome to outcome of the game to be because of that I don't want you know I don't want my opponent to sort of come up with excuses about any sort of misunderstandings or, or rules not being used to adv advantage them I want them to get the benefit of the doubt and things I don't want them to be comfortable with them playing the version of the game that they're playing so that I can then have a chance to overcome them with superior play and that's where as a general as somebody who's a tactician your skill is less questionable you know you it's it's a bit more obvious that you're a better infinity player than somebody else if you're constantly giving them the benefit of the doubt and giving them all these comfort uh, uh, guidelines and then you beat them anyway so I think that's one thing that could be satisfying about uh, wargaming is that people will always disagree with you you know you get people who say I oh, this unit's good this unit's bad or this way of playing is good this way of playing is bad but if you're thrashing that person constantly it's gonna it's gonna look a bit suspicious when you get into arguments with them and, and for a philosophical level like if you're if you're constantly wiping the floor with one player and <laughs> you disagree with them about which factions and which units are good and which way of playing is the best then um, people are gonna notice and I think I think it's similar with with this sort of thing as well I mean if if I'm playing against somebody and they are a hardcore advocate of just playing rules as written no pie slicing no rules as intent and I'm still beating them um, then then that's basically that that side of the game is a non-issue and uh, I'd be perfectly happy with that write me a video description if you want to have something to say guys but um, I'm pretty sure everything has already been said on the forums and uh, check out that article if you like I'll see you next time